Hey everyone, thank you for checking out another video. This is gonna be another generative art tutorial. In this video, we're gonna focus on circle packing, which is just this concept of fitting a lot of circles into a specified space without any of them overlapping or intersecting. It creates a really cool visual, and you can see that here. It's difficult to see because the circles, some of them are very small, and my resolution isn't the best, so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit on this image. And if you scroll around through this, you'll see that even all of these smaller circles, none of them are actually overlapping or touching. So I'm gonna start like usual, I'm gonna define width and height. We'll set it to 1000, 1000. One thing that is exciting about this video is that we'll actually be using a class to draw the circles. Each circle is gonna kind of be a, almost a, a particle I don't know why I don't just set this up before the video. Size, background. I could say for I in range 1000, circle, random W, random H, random 20. So we're going to draw 1000 circles randomly all over with a random size. They're obviously intersecting because we haven't given any logic whatsoever to keep them from doing that. We're going to take this function and we're going to pull it out into its own class. And we can actually do that now. So def, I, or actually, okay, so class, actually I think it is lowercase, class. I call it circ. I'm not a huge fan of that just because, I don't know, it's a little weird, but circ, I guess I'll stick with that. The first function is an initiation function, init. You have to pass in self. And you can do this a few different ways. I'm just going to pass in size into the init function. But that may change later. So self.size, we're setting the class variable, it, what will be the instance variable once we instantiate the circ. I don't think I actually need this. Def add valid let's just call this function add valid so up here i can say circles equals blank list so let's assume that it is valid we've added it we're just going to say circles dot append self at the end we're going to add this circle to the list of circles to check against in the add valid you could do this in the init but i kind of want to do it here we're going to set position to a random value just like we did before or we're still doing down there all we have to do is step through our list for i in well we'll say for c in circles so for every circle in circles distance is equal to square root so c position dot one so this will be the circle that we're checking against minus self position one so we said power comma two so we're saying y minus y squared plus we'll do the exact same thing power except with the x's so that and that and then i think we need another parentheses so that should be the distance then as long as the distance is greater than well, I'll check if it's less than actually, because then we want to fail it. So I'll say, actually we need before this, we'll say valid equals true. And if distance, if the distance between the circles is less than the radius of this circle plus the radius of our circle, then valid equals false. At the end here, we're also appending circle to self. We've already done that, but we also have to display it. And that's going to be our next method, def display. Display is just going to actually call the circle built-in processing function. Then I think that's it. Well, we obviously need to say if valid we'll pin it and then self.display 
So let's run it, see what's wrong. A lot's wrong. What's wrong is I'm not calling any of these functions whatsoever. I'm still just calling this random thing down here. So what we actually want to do is replace this with C equals circ. And then remember we have to pass in size. You don't have to pass in anything for self. So for size, let's just say 20. That shouldn't be a problem with as few as we're doing. And then we just say circ.add valid or C dot valid and that does not work oh because we're passing in oh we need to I'm sorry so for these functions we need to pass in self within the class so yeah, there you go that's a very simple base level brute force circle packing algorithm so this definitely works but it's not very efficient as the number of circles increases we're comparing every circle against every existing circle and that just can't be the way that it works because there's no reason imagine a circle that has a size of three that's in the very bottom left corner of our canvas but it's still checking to make sure that it's not overlapping with all of the other circles so we're just going to cut this and now i'm going to show you how to make it just a little bit more efficient it's not the best way to do things but i think it'll help a lot and that's by introducing kind of this background grid we can still use this circles array we just need to add a few more variables grid width we'll start with 20 grid height equals 20 we're gonna break down the image into cell sizes so cell and that's based off of the grid width and grid height width equals float Now we can use this information to find out where in our grid, once we define it, once we create the grid, we'll be able to find where a circle is in the grid based on its actual pixel position. So def get grid position. I'm going to explain this method in just a second. When I'm defining this grid, which I can do down here in the setup function, so first we instantiate all of these empty lists in the circles list we've said grid width times grid height because that's going to be the length of this so for our length right now it's 400 it'll have 400 lists in it and that's because there are 400 cells in our grid we're treating it like a list just because i don't know i kind of i'm developing a personal preference for that and that's why we have to do this little tricky thing here to get our position so within our add valid function we can say grid position equals int get grid position self dot position zero self dot position one we're going to use that to check against and add to the proper list so for c n circles grid position now I'm gonna add another list within the class and that's just gonna be my compare list it's kind of arbitrary what you name it and so we're adding all of this to this list and now instead of going through circles we're just gonna go through the compare list so let's try it doesn't work Oh, that's because when we say that it's valid and we're appending to circles, we need to say grid position. We're appending to the grid position list. That also does not work. And that is because I need to cast these to ints, essentially to get rid of whatever, I, I essentially need to floor these.
Okay, see how fast that was? The only problem is this isn't entirely correct. Let's lower the cell size to two. Well, let's say four and four. And we'll run this. There's this line here that would be the horizontal border between the first row and the second row. And you can kind of see that repeat here and a little bit repeat there. And then you see the columns here. They're just overlapping on the borders of their cells. Obviously, we can't just check the cell that we're in. We have to check the bordering cells. I am going to copy in some code. I don't think it formatted properly. Let's see, let's pull that back. Okay, so this is the code that's essentially grabbing all of the circles that are within the surrounding grid list or the grid positions. It is a little bit simpler to work with 2D arrays and I'd encourage you to do that if that's what you're more comfortable with. Hopefully you can work through these if statements and kind of figure out the logic, but it's all associated back to the way that we have defined our list. These here at the bottom are the ones that are grabbing kind of, you know, up and to the left, up and to the right, down and to the left, down and to the right. So if we run this without changing any of our parameters, It'll be a little bit slower, but it works. You can't see the cell outlines anymore because we are accounting for the surrounding grid. So we are going to add this color palette that I just copied in. These are just some cool colors pulled from an open source color scheme. I'm also going to define a new method, set palette color. This is, so we're gonna grab a color from the color palette it's a little weird how we have to do this int random length of the color palette and then fill so that's how that works and then we can just call set color palette every time we call display or set palette color Let's run it again. Oops. Let's actually increase the size. Well, it looks a lot better. The reason it's running so slowly is because we've set our grid cells much longer than, much larger than they need to be. So if I increase this even just to 10, the process runs a lot faster and that's because we're checking much less. The smaller the cell sizes, obviously the less number of circles we're having to check. That actually works really well. We're obviously not placing 20,000 of these circles because there's not 20,000 in this image. It's just running through it really quickly because they're failing. They're not valid, so they're not being placed. I think if we bring this down to 10,000, it'll essentially look the exact same. And it's much faster. I'm, I've actually been doing something very inefficient because I haven't put in any kind of fail safe. Basically what you would do is when you're looking for valid circles, if it's not valid, you kind of increment this fail count. And once your fail count gets to a certain level, you just stop trying to place circles because it just can't happen anymore. You might would say, okay, I'm gonna try to place 20,000, but if I get 2,000 failures, go ahead and cut it. Let's not do it anymore. But one of the cool things that we can do, so we know 50 works. So what if we say random 50? We've got variable size, but none of the circles intersect. So it already looks really cool. I think that is a really good basic introduction to circle packing. There are a lot of applications. You'll see it in a lot of generative art projects. And as always, I'd encourage you to take this code and play with it on your own. Thank you so much for watching another video. Hopefully it's been helpful. If you learned something new, remember to hit the subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. And I will hopefully see you in the next video.